Hey Scorpio, welcome in to the Clear Art Alchemy Tower Station. This is your June message, okay? Now I've already pulled the Oracle cards to see where Spirit wanted me to direct this reading. You pulled the Green Tara, okay? Now she's a phenomenal Divine Feminine. She's a girl who told the men, listen, you don't have to be male to be enlightened. And I'm going to keep reincarnating as female over and over and over again till you get the message, till I've helped to release lots of people from their mental mental prisons right okay you pulled reaching your destination hunter of strength and have faith in your dreams okay so lovely energy here your light is shining brightly okay so i feel like june's a big month for you green tower is also about finding that love for someone who might really need it and how little deeds of love and kindness can really be a huge, big, monumental thing to someone else. Okay, so it's not about big, grand gestures. It's about small things potentially being so meaningful and so huge to someone. Okay, so I'm going to get on and pull some tarot and see. See what's going on here for Scorpio. Okay, we've got the Wheel of Fortune. The Queen of Pentacles. Lovely. Looks like you're moving into some really opulent and um, very comfortable situations here. I feel like you've had a lot to go through to get to the point that you're at. You know, a lot of trials and tribulations with the Seven of Swords. A lot of having to kind of be like 007, make quick little decisions, you know, dodge certain people, certain timelines. I feel like luck's really on your side here because the non-physicals, the... The divine beings that watch us, okay? The people in spirit that watch us, they've been seeing your every move. They've seen how much diligence you've put in, how much determination you've put in, all the surviving you've done, all the alchemizing you've done with the magician showing up here. Yeah, I feel like either you're going to be there for someone when they really need it or they're going to be there for you when you really need it in June. But I feel like more like this is you being there for someone who maybe didn't treat you the best, okay? So it's almost like a spiritual test, a spiritual thing that is so powerful when you keep giving love to people who simply want to drag you into their misery because they're on a 3D mindset, you know? They could be depressed, they could be suffering. And often it feels like, oh, they're narcissistic, they're trying to pull me down. But once you raise your consciousness back out of that timeline, you can see it clearly that they're really damaged, they really need help and you're winning for the God team. You're winning for source energy. I'm not saying get back with someone who's treated you badly. That is not what I'm saying. But if you can sit in your own energy and feel love for someone like that, it neutralizes their chaos causing energy. It neutralizes their, their so-called power, you know, their inverted power, their upside down idea of power. If we can throw love at someone, we feel like it's been evil to us. That's powerful stuff. And again, I'm not talking about going back to an abusive situation or anything like that. But this is for, you know, maybe a chosen one that I'm talking to who's picked a specific spiritual pathway that's tricky, tricky to traverse, right? You, you can get like special forces of the yin realm. So just like you've got the Navy SEALs and you've got the Marines who are yang realm special forces, we also have yin realm special forces, people who can help people out of certain mindsets, rescue people from certain mindsets and certain places they get stuck in a non-physical way. So this is about non-physical warfare, okay? Spiritual warfare, I feel. Hmm, interesting. Two of pentacles, six of pentacles. I feel like you're really comfy in June. Like you can afford to be generous with someone you might not have ever thought you'd see or speak to again. Someone who's kind of destabilized, they're a bit back and forth. I feel like you've tried to help them before. I feel like they're quite manipulative. But again, you have all these forces on your side with the Wheel of Fortune. And you're determined to be happy. You're determined to be graceful, to be wealthy, to be fit and healthy and aligned, right? You're determined to live a beautiful life here. We've got the Ten of Cups also coming out. And the Ace of Pentacles, lovely. You're solid on your path, okay? You're really secure, you're looking beautiful. I feel like you're really at a new level of glowing, but in a beautiful, calm way. Like, you know who you are, you've got nothing to prove. And it's almost like you're so secure that any conflictual energies that come along, they're not gonna destabilize you, okay? You're gonna be sat here 
in luxury, in peace, in abundance, happy with a new path. You've got a gift from the universe coming in here, something that will make you truly happy. You might have to fight for it. You might have to get your competitive mode on. We've got the Empress on the bottom of the deck. Lovely energy. So you're really in your power in June, okay? Luck is on your side. You've got access to all this abundant happiness. A big new pathway opening up. So if you've been back and forth on something, you know, dealing with people who were distracting your focus and therefore distracting your alchemical power, that's going to stop. You're getting clear on what makes you happy. You're coming back to versions of you over and over again that are grounded, wholesome. They're telling me self-actualizing, like you're bringing versions of yourself into reality that, you know, we can sometimes doubt our higher self. When we go down to the 3D, the person we are in a 3D mindset is not the same person we are at a higher vibrational level, at a 5D mindset. And I think you're realizing that you're going to keep going back to your higher self over and over and over again, and that that is who you truly are, and you're getting comfortable with this, all right? So people are sneaky. They can try and convince you that you are your lower self. That is the job of the opposers, the one who opposed the Godhead, the competition, you could say, those who aren't light workers but chaos causes. They'll always try and convince you that you are your lower self because that is what they have chosen to be in this lifetime. It's almost like there could be someone you're trying to convince them that they are their higher self. You're trying to raise their frequency. You're trying to help them or save them or you have done in the past. And all they've done is try and convince you that you're your lower self. But I think like it's helped you to become who you truly are. It's helped you to be like, no, no, I'm not giving up. I've got too much evidence, okay? I know by how I feel that I'm a, I'm a beautiful being of source. I'm a raw baby. I'm a child of source. I'm beautiful. I'm divine. You could be chosen. You could be starseed. It doesn't matter. Everyone's divine. Some people, some sneaky people, chaos causes, have just chosen to play the role of being on the opposite side, right? So if this is Team Godhead, they're down here. They see through the other side of the mirror. Total different opposing perspectives. But I feel like you've got a big heart, okay? I feel like your love is endless, bounteous, flowing. And you can keep up with the best of them, okay? If there's some business path you've been thinking about taking, if you've been wondering, can I do this? Am I ready for this? Am I right for this? Yes, you are, okay? It's the belief that you are and the knowing that you are that makes it so. If you doubt yourself, meh, it tells the universe you're not ready yet. But once you decide you are ready, that makes you ready, okay? We are the gods of our own reality. We create. We are portions of the big one consciousness that people call God. We are all portions of one consciousness. Even those people we hate, even those people playing on the evil team, they're still part of us, okay? And we want to save as many souls and pull as many souls back towards the Godhead as we possibly can. Not saying some people can be brought over to team godhead in this lifetime i'm not saying waste your time or go back to people who clearly have a lot of work to do who clearly are low vibrational and happy being there you know save yourself do not get yourself in any bullshit situations okay because that's some heavy duty spiritual warfare that i wouldn't recommend for the average person but I see you getting really happy in June, really realizing, yeah, I can keep up with this competition. Hunter of strength, having faith in your dreams, reaching some sort of destination of the soul, realizing how enlightened you are. And they're telling me to tell you, you can call on these deities, you can meditate, you can raise your frequency, and you can line up with these beautiful deities. They're always there energetically. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, but there's only one God. Yeah, that one God is every single one of us. Okay, it's not a man sat up in the sky, sorry to disappoint some people, but our minds are that, are that powerful. I still like to talk to God as if he is a man in the sky, because I know I can, I've got the right to do that. If that comforts me, despite all my metaphysical knowledge, I'm allowed to do that, and my mind makes it so, because we create reality with our minds. Show me this ten of cups, please, spirit. Show me the ten of cups. Strength, yeah, lovely, Leo energy. Really being strong enough to choose happiness, I feel like. Yeah, we've got the heartbreak card coming out, three of swords, but I feel like you've been strong enough to choose happiness, strong enough to realize that the theater of your mind is yours, okay? No one gets to control what goes on in your mind. No one gets to decide how you feel. 
And I really feel like the universe is really responding to choices you've made to up your frequency, to love yourself, to be kind to yourself, to decide to choose to live an abundant, prosperous, stable, happy, peaceful, calm life with lots of fun and friendship. Okay, decide on that and it must come. It is law. It is universal law. Ace of Wands, yeah, lovely. I'm getting a lot of fun from this Ace of Wands, like a burst of happiness, a burst of fresh, frenetic, excitable, adventurous energy. You could be going on an adventure, going on a holiday here. Maybe some of you are going on a holiday to ease your heartbreak, to heal yourself. It's a good idea. Spirit will be there with you, bolstering you up, waiting to merge with every cell in your body, to laugh with you, to have fun with you, okay? Beautiful sense of freedom here. The Ace of Wands is all about freedom. It's about that raw spiritual power we have to fight back in life, but also to fight for our happiness, to fight for feeling good, and to realize there are many ways of fighting, and choosing happiness is one way of doing that. You're fighting for divinity when you choose happiness. And it seems like an opposite sort of way, like people are brainwashed in the 3D to think that you've got to be like punching people in the face to be a fighter. No, meditation is a form of spiritual warfare. It sounds crazy, but when you meditate, when you raise your frequency, it's like pouring water on a fire. It disables the negative energies, okay? They want you angry. They want you hateful. That makes you the same frequency as them. That puts you on their level, right? So that love, that defiant love, that defiant meditation, defiant acts of self-love in the midst of potential chaos, manipulation. Yeah, we know they're annoying. We know they're little you-know-whats. We know they're annoying little evil chaos causes. We know that. But the challenge is to still choose happiness and still choose to flow them love. If you really want to beat them, love them. Trust me. It debilitates them. They don't know what to do with that love coming at them. It it dissolves the hatred, all right? Hope this makes sense, all right? Let me know in the comments if this is resonating because this is a strong message for someone out there. On top of the Ace of Pentacles, we've got the Nine of Pentacles. This is what I'm saying, Queen of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles. You are solidified, you are established, okay? You are powerful, powerful creator, powerful manifester, Okay, June is your month, okay, for powerful manifestations. Use any annoying energies that come at you. Transmute them. Realize it's a sign of your power, especially when you get to certain levels and you're starting to really flow in harmony with the universe. Da -da -da -da, here they come to test you yet again. Remember, they're reflections of us. They are essentially part of us, <laughs> all right? As much as that may, may, might make some people feel sick to think, I'm nothing to do with these chaos-causing people. It's like... Yeah, but you are deep down, deep down, we all know from our higher self level that we chose to come in and incarnate and play this game because we had infinity. So it's like, well, what realms are we going to create? What fun are we going to have? How are we going to push ourselves and challenge ourselves? How are we going to expand our consciousness? Because to have eternal life, eternal consciousness, you need to be conjuring up and receiving, conjuring up. You need to donate energy forward, receive it back, okay? They're telling me to tell you about the DMT elves. Now, I've never done a full dose of DMT, but I've heard about these DMT elves, okay? I did a tiny bit of DMT once, and I ended up in the hallway of the mind when I could see all the Hindu symbols. There's always Hindu symbols, the fabric of reality. And they were telling me, I know you, you are goddess. And I told my exes, and I don't need to do loads of DMT. I'm already linked up with the fabric of the universe. I'm a bloody high priestess. So I didn't need to do that. And they knew that. They've got a beautiful sense of humor. But remember, these people are portions of you. Okay, I don't know who needs to hear that, but we all come from the one consciousness and it gets complex. I know it does. Right, show me the five of wands. I'm going off on a bit of a tangent there, but that might really help someone out there. And if you're interested in knowing more about the fabric of the universe, then um, I'll be putting more videos out on a new channel once this one's really established. So like, comment, subscribe. I'll be putting out some real gems. I promise you that. Have faith in me when I say there are some real gems getting put out very soon okay we've got the seven of wands coming out also hope you can see that so boundaries okay if people want to be conflictual with you you've got your boundaries and again this is about energetic boundaries okay being in the right mindset is the best boundary and love is the greatest protector if you can stay on a frequency of love which sounds all sappy and woo woo but i'm telling you if you can stay on a frequency of love and there are many types of love you will be safe all right 
Show me the queen. Show me this beautiful queen of pentacles up here. Show me, show me. What bridges the queen with the seven of swords? What bridges? Okay, page of wands. So yeah, maybe you're receiving like messages or someone's trying to contact you. They're probably still quite immature. Yeah, spirit's telling me they kind of burn like, like a little hellion. Okay, and spirit says that lightheartedly, but this person's got a little bit of devilish energy. They're quite fixated on you. But you've got this, okay? You are strong in your power. I've just given you the key to debilitate them. So you're going to be fine here. Let me see what other advice we've got for this. Show me the page of wands. Four of wands. This person just keeps making you more and more spiritually powerful, I feel. And I think it confuses them. I think it gets them all confused. Maybe they try and use twin flame stuff as a way of manipulating you. But I feel like you're going through to a new level now, okay? You're too established spiritually. You're too strong spiritually. The four pillars of spiritual power, stable, established. You've got dominion, okay? Probably without even wanting it, you've got dominion over them spiritually. Page of Pentacles. Yeah, I feel like you just keep learning. You just keep getting better. And I feel like they've got a thing or two to learn from you. So this could be someone that you planned on bumping into them in this level of the game, in this incarnation, in this movie, this, this chapter of your many lives, okay? In your multi-dimensionality, you thought, right, I'm gonna bump into this person again, you both agreed on it, and you've got a few lessons to teach them about a few things. I mean, this could be a uh, 11, 11 twin flame thing for some of you, but at the end of the day, we have to learn that everything we need is inside us first before these unions can even come together. So still a lot to learn for both or either of you, but I feel like they'll be reaching out to you and learning from you a lot more. I feel like you can help them a lot more. But of course, we take our spiritual lessons where we can find them. Learn, be a perpetual student of the universe. Never feel like we're, we should never feel like we're too good to learn, okay? Because there's always more stuff to learn. Okay, we've got the magician and the nine of cups. Beautiful, manifesting your ultimate emotional satisfaction, fulfillment, all your wishes, Okay, focus on those wishes. Keep yourself on that frequency. Never forget the magic, okay? When we've got our inner child infused as well, when we allow ourselves to be like little kids running through Toys R Us, even when we're just walking to the shop to get some milk or whatever, there's beautiful things all around. You know, there's artwork all around us. Keep yourself on that bright, ethereal, inner child level of things. You know, let your inner child run free with you through all that you do in June. And that always strengthens us up, all right? We didn't have the longest childhood of any creature we've ever heard of for nothing. We had the longest childhood so that we would remain linked up to non-physical. For the first seven years of our lives, we are completely in a hypnotic state. That's what the scientists would call it. They would call it being in a hypnotic state because the human brain up till seven years old is completely lit up on a brain scan. Now, what does that mean? It means that a child has complete access to the backstage. So here's the yang ram, here's the yin ram. They try and get us trapped just with yang ram energy so we lose our connection to the magic. They do it through brainwashing us with maths and science and various other boiling the frog techniques, right? <laughs> but ideally we need to reconnect with the yin ram, emerge them both together so that we live completely ethereally and remember our power and remember how beautiful life is. So we don't just allow ourselves to have the odd weekend where we feel free and we feel alive. We should feel free and alive all day long, finding our sovereign path. You could be finding your real path here, doing what you plan to come in to do. So that means the calling, something that keeps calling at you, that is a unique positioning, finding your higher self and sticking with it. You're not giving in and living a 3D lifestyle. Not when you're watching my channel, okay? There's something calling at you something meant for you, a job, uh, positioning. I don't want you to separate it as a job because you being you, as an alchemist, I don't see what I'm doing right now as a job. I see it as me being me. I'm in my sovereignty. I'm doing what I came here to do. Was it easy getting to this point? No, I had to battle with myself because, you know, I quit a really good job to start my own businesses and do my own thing. It took a lot of courage. Because I thought, well, am I being stupid here? No, I was following my dreams and I should have done it with more gusto. But we're so conditioned by the 3D, it's hard for us to let go of that secure paycheck or whatever because, 
you know, we've been brainwashed that that's what we need to do. And humans are very hypnotic. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling on. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Anything else? Show me the wheel of fortune. Destiny calling. I'm hearing that destiny is calling you to be this solidified, beautiful, luxurious, nurturing, abundant queen. Okay, male or female. The queen of pentacles is very nurturing, very wholesome. She plants a beautiful garden in her mind and that garden of the mind expands out all around her so that everyone who comes near her consciousness, her world, you could say her magnetic field, they're going to benefit from those beautiful energies that she carries with her. Absolutely gorgeous. Page of Swords. Five of Pentacles. Someone's going to be watching you during this glow up. Okay, I feel like page, page, page. We've got lots of immature little page energies around. This person could be shapeshifty, but they sure as hell are immature. Every time they shapeshift, it's it's so immature. You've left them out in the cold, I feel. There's someone you've left out in the cold, someone you're not talking to anymore. They could have been karmic, but I feel like they're a big part in getting your will moving forward in your destiny. So something they did may have triggered you, may have catalyzed you to be like, no, thank you for being such an asshole that you've reminded me who I truly am. And they're going to have to watch you, okay? Living this dream. I love it when the Nine of Pentacles comes out with the Nine of Cups. Double confirmation of your greatness. They match up so beautifully. Hmm. Two of Cups. Wow. Emperor. <laughs> Spirit said this person's going to have to watch you or you've let them go because you've got this two of cups emperor energy coming in. We've got the fool on the bottom of the deck. Okay. Your self-love is leading you to paths of reciprocal love. Oh, empress, emperor. I just realized I keep getting this. There's loads of divine unions coming into being. Wow. 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 I want to get another deck to clarify because I pulled quite a lot of these out. Oh my God, look what just fell out. Ace of Cups. Ace of Cups. If you've been dealing with anyone toxic, okay, that you've let go, that's watching you from the sidelines or whatever, let that go, okay, and be fully confident in this new connection that's coming in because these are powerful energies. All right, this is real boss energy. Look at him. Look at that compared to that. I mean, what would you want? What do you want? You can feel the energy. I know you guys. I know you guys have got a psychic brain just like me. The brain is a human aerial. You've got a magnetic field. You're switched onto energies. And you're watching tarot videos, so you sure as hell have got the potential. You know, look at that. That's worth waiting for. That fiery energy. That king level energy. Now, if I'm talking to a dude, this is you coming into those beautiful energies. The relationship's lining up for you. Beautiful, divine, feminine energy coming in for you. Wow. Do I need anything else? High Priestess on the bottom of the deck. Someone's been initiated upper level. Okay. Someone's been initiated upper level. And because you've had so much faith th through all your trials and tribulations, because you've had strength, because you managed to give love in the most unusual situations where other people probably couldn't do the mental alchemy needed to raise their frequency and keep on flowing love, you know, other people would hit the 3D with a bang and stay there because they've been hurt or wounded. But you see the beauty in life. Your light shines brightly. You know how to lift yourself up and raise yourself back up and have faith in the divine and have faith in your dreams. And I feel like that's coming to fruition in June. Beautiful energy. Lovely. I've got a lot of Scorpio in my charts. So I'm hoping this is relevant to me. Pluto in Scorpio in my first house, Venus in Scorpio in my first house, Mercury in Scorpio in my second house, and uh, my Pluto and my Venus in Scorpio in my first house goes along with my Libra sun. So people get a bit confused. I'm a bit like a little feral cherub. I can be really sweet and angelic because of the Libra, but if you cross me, <laughs> that is when, you know, you'll see my vampiric side. Anyway, enough about me. We've got the Magician again coming out on the Six of Pentacles. Hmm. Interesting energy. It's almost like someone tries to be manipulative, but you kind of turn the tables on them by being kind and helpful. It's, it's something they don't expect. More please, spirit. The moon. Hmm, very mysterious. I feel like someone tries to use kindness as a way of manipulating you for someone out there. They try and, uh, they've got underhanded tactics. They keep their real motivations hidden. 
and they try and act like they're helping you out where I, whereas I feel like in reality they need you they need your energy this could be a past situation yeah we've got the knight of wands I feel like this is this past person you know you'll know how this fits just be aware of someone with dubious intentions anything else I'm going to pull another deck pull another deck for the final clarifiers who are you six of pentacles see that just popped out yeah a little devil pretending to be helpful with ghouls, non-physical ghouls. See, not everyone's got lovely guides who are trying to guide them back towards divinity. Some people have chosen the negative polarity. That means they've got little asshole guides, all right? Telling them stuff to further their goals, which are completely opposite to ours. But remember, that love debilitates and that love totally dissolves their power. Yeah, that's the nature of our game. Okay, four of cups. So turning someone down who's not worthy of you. Hanged man. And the death card flipping over. Yeah, I feel like something's over with this person. You've got something much, much better coming in. I feel like doing another reading just on these energies. And to be honest, I might do. So keep an eye out. Hit that subscribe button. Activate your higher self. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Activate your magic. Okay. It's been wonderful having you here. I'm going to just read quickly from this big fat theosaurus, right? Because this is such a good oracle. And I'm going to see what does Scorpio need to know at this time. Matrimony. Oh my God. Oh my God. My eye went straight to matrimony. Holy matrimony marriage. Holy orders. Wow. I love you, Scorpio. Mwah.